If you've just got a 3D printer and you want to know how to wall mount your Lego, then this video is for you. All in all, it's pretty simple to wall mount your Lego, but there are a few things that you need to watch out for. Everything I'm going to be using today is my Bamboo Lab A1 printer, which I picked up a year ago, and I picked it up for this exact purpose of making wall mounts. Obviously, I've found quite a few other uses for it since then. But today I'm going to take you through printing and wall mounting my UCS Lego Venator, which is a little bit more complicated than a couple of small Lego cars that weigh next to nothing. But the advice that I will give you is still the same regardless, because nobody wants their expensive Lego set to fall on the floor into a million pieces. So to start with, the first thing we're going to look at is finding the best model for you. And I would recommend you actually search by the set number, because set numbers and names of sets can get quite confusing, so set number is really simple. Like, there's about 50 different Millennium Falcon sets at this point, and I definitely did not print the wrong one for mine. Okay, maybe I did. Okay, so once you've found the correct number, which in my case is 75367, you'll also find that on your box or on the instructions, then you want to search for that number and wall mount 3D print, something to that effect. Most of it should know how to use Google. But the question is next, paid set or free set? You can see there's one here on printables which has no reviews, but probably will do the job if you printed it and it worked for this guy. However, I am not entrusting my £500 plus set to chance, so I'm going to go with someone who is well established in the Lego 3D printing wall mounting community. And that is Gecko Bricks on Colts 3D. I'm pretty sure if you order a wall mount from eBay, you will end up with one of his mounts. His number of sales all speak for themselves, and he always seems to end up with five stars on his designs. So he's pretty good at what he does. But this video isn't sponsored by Gecko Bricks, so if you find one that you like on Maker World, Printables, Cults 3D, wherever you look, and you like it, you use it. But for the purpose of this one, I'm going to go ahead and download this print. Now you can see the files that I've downloaded here, and you're going to need to look out for a few things in there if you're downloading these Gecko Bricks ones. If you're downloading from somewhere else, it likely says in the description what percentage infill you need to have, how many walls you need to have. That's what I'm looking at here. So you can see on that wall stretcher one at the bottom, it needs to be a 100% solid piece. That's the piece that actually screws to the wall, so it takes all of the weight. And these arms need to have more walls and a bit more infill at 40%. This might not sound that important, but it is. You're not really using much more filament, but you're making your pieces a lot stronger. Okay, the 100% solid infill uses quite a bit more filament but that piece needs to be really strong. If you're printing small Speed Champions wall mounts, then you're probably not really gonna need any infill. The 15% default will be fine. But now I'm gonna throw these into my slicer, which is Bamboo Studio, because I have a Bamboo Lab printer, but you use the Studio for whatever printer brand that you have. They all should have very similar options on infill walls and stuff like that. You just need to know where they are in the slicer. So that brings us on to the second point, which is adding in infills and adjusting the wall count. This is one of those pieces that needed five walls and a 40% infill. So you'll find it here in Bamboo Studio under strength. You just change wall infill to five, and then that will do five loops of the wall. And then you come down to sparse infill density and change that to 40%. Again, all this information you should be able to find in the description of whatever mount you're printing. If it doesn't have it, then likely the defaults are fine. But always do check, especially for big sets. Number three on our things to do is to check the orientation of your print. Now this is really important, and it might even be a little bit counterintuitive, but it all makes sense once you know what you're looking for. This piece on the screen should be printed laying down, and that's because the printer will do the whole print as one solid layer. So when the lateral forces hit, i.e. when I put my Venator on the wall, it's not going to be able to pull at any particular layer join. The whole thing is a single layer, if that makes sense. So printing this laying down is the ideal way to print it, as you can see by me deconstructing the layers there with the slider. What you want to do is avoid what's happening in this second scenario, if I can give this a quick rotate here. Now you'd never print this like this because Bamboo Studio would just call me an idiot. But perhaps you wanted to print a few when you thought it might work out better. I could print probably 10 standing up like this, whereas I'm limited to just the one if it's laying down. But as you'll see, when I start moving the slider, you'll see immediately where the weaknesses are. And there's even a point down at the bottom, which I have only just now seen, where it's only three pieces touching. Here I'm just showing you where four pieces are touching each other. So these four tiny pieces with their 40% infill are responsible for holding up my Lego Venator. So that what you can see on screen where the two colours change is a layer line. So it's likely to separate at that point if it was to break or fail. 
But with before, the whole thing was a layer line. The whole thing was made up of many layer lines in one go. Basically, you want bigger layer lines that aren't subject to the same levels of stress. The fourth question on the list to answer is PLA or PETG. And a quick Google search would tell you that PETG all the way. It's stronger, more durable. It takes longer to print, but it will just last longer overall. With all that said, I print everything in PLA and it works absolutely fine. I've never had a problem. My advice, use what you have. The fifth thing is not really anything to do with 3D printers. It's to do with how you actually mount the print on the wall. Now, if you're printing something really light, like a mount for a Speed Champion set, you can probably get away with a fully threaded screw like this one, straight into the plasterboard. If it's a plasterboard and you want a heavier set, then you'll need some appropriate wall anchors that can carry that weight. And if it's into a brick wall, like a few of my prints have been so far, you'll need plugs and screws. I sometimes put a washer around my screw to distribute the weight over my print a bit better, because when I tighten it up, I really don't want it to crack my PLA. And so using those newfound advices, the wall mount has just finished printing and it's time to actually assemble the thing. Nine times out of 10, if it requires assembly, you'll have to go back to the website you downloaded it from and look for instructions or a guide or just the photo. This particular print is reversible, so that hook can go on either side and the prints can go on either side. One has a longer hook, one has a shorter hook. It all depends on if you want the Veneta to be facing left or right. This one comes with a full-blown paperback manual when I downloaded it. It advised you to take off quite a few parts of the Veneta, which I didn't really want to do, so I didn't, and then they fell off anyway, because yeah, that's why it advises you to take them off. But it didn't take that long to put it back together, because I had to make some adjustments to the feet to make sure it would slot into the base. And what I'm doing now is just highlighting it where I want it to be, and I'm going to draw around the legs with a pencil so I can see where the mount wants to be positioned. I am going to put a washer on this screw when I screw it in the wall, but let me just say that I live in an old Victorian house, which is interesting to say the least. So this is plasterboard, and behind it is a lath and plaster wall, so I have pieces of small pieces of wood running horizontally across the entire wall which means that whenever I throw a screw in, I get a really solid fixing. So everything I've wall mounted there that you can see is basically just a screw in the wall, no anchors, because you might struggle if you need to mount the Veneta to a stud wall, a stud partition, because I don't think Lego make it to suit a stud partition wall. But there are decent wall anchors out there for that purpose. If you found this video helpful in any way, then please give us a subscribe. I post videos like this every now and then because I need to fund my insane Lego addiction somehow.